I just finished this video about creating a poor man's boat plot with a cheap function generator and a oscilloscope yeah, card link. And my last dot I was measurements taking from was this, oh, I guess, <laughs> 40 year old, <laughs> almost, uh, mono audio amplifier with some filters in it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I really wanted to have a look into it. I mean, I <clears throat> teared down my very first self-made analog multimeter, also card link a while ago. I think um, this is about the same age, maybe older uh, judging from the case. So let's have a look. I haven't really cleaned up the bench yet, but uh, Wow, I mean, this is real precision work and uh, yeah, note the stylish carrying handle and uh, yeah, the details of the front panel. I guess these screws held in a whole lot of small boards and I'm not really sure where to open it. <laughs> okay, um, let's try the top screws. Uh oh. Oh, that last screw is not screwed into anything. I have basically no idea how to <laughs> get that together again. Hmm. How did I close that up? I mean, there are obviously some nuts behind those screws. I can hear them falling down. <laughs> no, not yet. Oh yes, uh, here it comes. So, yeah, <clears throat> these were the wrong screws to open. You see, uh, yeah, these screws on the side, let me zoom down here. Yeah, they were not held in by anything. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> screwed into the wood and they held some, uh, excuse me for a second. They were held in by some brackets. Uh, oh, lots of dirt in here. They were held in by some brackets. Uh, this particular one is a little bit rusty. Let me zoom down again. Yeah, just held in by some brackets and that was then held. Yeah, you can see the rust here. Uh, to the wood with a little nut. So yeah. And inside we find something interesting. So zooming out again. So this is all our input output stuff. Uh, yeah. Eh. So this is our power supply sockets and there is even a diode, so you can't reverse polarity. That's nice. And uh, lots of free wiring here. Yeah, the pot here uh, for adjusting the level, uh, very interesting power switch, which seems to do nothing. Oh yes, it does something. Um, sorry. Let's try that again with maximum zoom. 
turning it. Yeah, you can see the slight movement there. Uh, <coughs> okay, and uh, yeah, input output switch here, also very interesting. Nice encapsulated. And then we have here our filter boards with various huh so i guess that here should be our band path i guess because it has two capacitors and two resistors but then they have all two capacitors and two resistors and I see something here a label oh this is going oh this is going really back a it's a e nine so a e stands for amateur electronics ah uh, I still am focused on there yeah pretty much and we have this nice audio amplifier yeah we saw that curve it's obviously from working from I guess 20 to 20 kilohertz of course and it has a nice Hitachi chip here can I get a focus come on a TBA 800 and lots of course lots of electrolytics which are all seem fine hmm so how where do we go from here uh, let me get that the book that comes with these boards here just a second there's the book in uh yeah a sorry state that's not me that's not my dad uh yeah the back is somewhere here <laughs> uh yeah and uh it says here there are <laughs> there's a printed circuit board for 10 amateur electronic circuits uh, let me look up these um, circuits so here we have the low pass filter and yeah you see it's not a simple rc filter there's a second resistor here and uh, that just means that after the cutoff frequency the curve is not as steep so it's not completely filtering out the higher frequencies it's just suppressing them a little bit and analog to that on yeah number nine uh, we have a high path filter which is also not filtering out yeah on curve would look like that the frequency response but yeah that part is not as steep because we also have here a second resistor not a simple rc filter and then we have something nobody of you will <laughs> probably know uh, but that's a ccir filter and that adjusts the frequency of records and I, I'm I'm vinyl records I'm I'm really talking here uh, vinyl records the, the black discs yeah with the grooves in it cut in a spiral that are read with a little needle uh, and the needle movement is then amplified into sound and uh, yeah because of the frequency response I get a guess of that mechanical system uh, the audio data, can we call it data? I guess, well, the audio data on it uh, 
had a specific frequency curve. And that filter basically translates that back to a more no, yeah, neutral frequency spectrum. Uh, most every, <laughs> interesting, everything. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> as I said, uh, this is old. So that book was actually printed in 1977. That would make this, this book 43 years old. But uh, yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> yeah, the amplifier is, <laughs> is probably uh, <laughs> not that old. I'm not that old, no. Um, <clears throat> But it's old. Yeah, and that's the <laughs> audio amplifier, the TBA 800. That thingy here, the TBA 800A, uh, the ears are not soldered down, yeah, for cooling, but uh, they are standing free so you can attach your own heatsink if you want the maximum power out of that thing, which is, I guess, five watts at a 24 watt power supply and a 60 ohm speaker. Wow. So one last look before we put it back. Uh, yeah, low pass filter, high pass filter, the CCIR filter, and the amplifier TBA 800 based. And yeah, I <clears throat> uh, added some <laughs> labels uh, if I need that thing the next time. So CCIR filter, high path, low path. Uh, this is direct, uh, this is off. And yeah, uh, one zero one on off. Yeah, that's working. And oh, that might be still interesting. Yeah, 12 volts, I guess, or something. It's actually an 18 volt lamp. Okay, <laughs> didn't know such things exist. Anyway, uh, let's put that, is that in focus? Yeah, barely. Let's put that back in here and then close the whole thing up again. Oh, this is, oh, I don't know. Uh, all these parts here, uh, but maybe for the potentiometer, they came all out of some old telecommunication equipment. You know, I'm, I'm talking uh, analog phone exchanges, yeah, yeah. Not, not the real old ones where you have to uh, yeah, make the connections by hand, but uh, uh, still where they had the relays rotating, this big rotating relays, uh, making the connection as you dialed, not with the tone, what with pulses. Uh, all very, very interesting. And let's see if I can close that thing up this time, how it was intended to be closed up. I mean, I can't barely, I mean, I remember that thing when I tested it. And uh, yeah, the amplifier is of such quality that <laughs> there was really only one song of my tape recorder that, uh, yeah, sounded okay uh, when fed in through into that thing here. And now I can screw that stuff in again. And Come on, one, 
Yeah, let's write here two. Come on. Yeah, it, it's kind of hit and miss construction. But yeah, <laughs> it worked. Okay, 40 year old or something. Uh, my first audio amplifier with three filters, including a filter to play the vinyl records. Mono, of course. <sighs> Bye.